I never thought the words Rutgers and the college football playoff would go together in a sentence, especially with where the program was right before Greg Schiano arrived in 2020, when they were the laughing stock to many. Schiano has turned the program around from being the butt of many Big Ten jokes to now being thrown into the college football playoff conversation. This is the rise of Rutgers football and why they are college football playoff dark horses. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know who your favorite college football playoff dark horse is in the comment section below. In 2001, Rutgers hired a guy by the name of Greg Schiano as the school's next head coach, when the program was in a bad place. Schiano would help turn the program around, making them relevant in the Big East, leading them to six bowl games in just seven years from 2005 to 2011, or leaving to take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coaching job in the NFL after a 9-4 season in 2011. For in an interview Shiano did back in 2023, he never wanted to leave Rutgers, but got worried with what was going on with conference expansion and felt like the Big East was dying. He said, quite honestly, I wanted to be at Rutgers the rest of my career. I built a house half a mile from here. I was going to stay here the rest of my career. But then our league fell apart. I really felt trapped. All of a sudden, we were not going to have a league. I ran from something, not to something. When Rutgers got an invite to the Big Ten, he was excited for the program, but heartbroken that he was not there. He had always dreamed about Rutgers in the Big Ten, but he was no longer the head coach. To be honest, Shiano is probably the reason Rutgers even got an invite. Kyle Flood was promoted from assistant head coach to head coach after Shiano departed from the NFL. Flood was originally from New York and attended Iona for college. He served as the offensive line coach at St. Francis Prep, CW Post, Hofstra, and Delaware from 1993 to 2004. He was then hired as the offensive line coach at Rutgers in 2005. From 2005 to 2011, on top of being the offensive line coach, he also served as run game coordinator in 2007, assistant head coach from 2008 to 2011, and offense coordinator in 2009 and 2010. Other than Flood, they looked at Mario Cristobal as a possible head coach, who was at FIU at the time and also offered Ron Rivera, according to Bleacher Report. During Flood's first season, Rutgers went 9-4 and, and tied for first in the Big East, winning the school's first ever Big East title, which was a shared title. Flood was named the Big East Coach of the Year, which he shared with Charlie Strong at Louisville. Flood set the record for the most first season wins in Rutgers history. The defensive unit was one of the best in school history, finishing 4th in scoring defense, 9th in turnovers, and 10th in total defense. On the offensive end, Brandon Coleman had 10 receiving touchdowns, which tied a school record. The Scarlet Knights would lose to Virginia Tech in the Russell Athletic Bowl 13-10 in overtime. Rutgers had a school record 7 players drafted and 12 players signed with NFL teams. In 2013, Rutgers suffered an overtime loss to Fresno State 52-51. After that game, they went on a 4-game win streak including a comeback win over Arkansas, the first time an SEC team traveled to High Point Solution Stadium. The Big East had turned into the American Conference and Rutgers won their first conference game 55-52 in triple overtime. Rutgers became bowl eligible on senior night and once again traveled to Yankee Stadium to play in the New Era Pinstripe Bowl, where they played a ranked Notre Dame and lost 29-16. Then on July 1, 2014, Rutgers officially joined the Big Ten Conference. Rutgers had joined the conference in hopes of increasing national exposure and to make more money through athletics. The Big Ten added Rutgers for the purpose of TV money and the access to the New York City market. The Big Ten commissioner also said they added Rutgers due to their athletic excellence. The football team struggled for a very long time after this move. Attendance at games dwindled over the years, to the point that during some games there were more away fans in the stands than Rutgers fans at games. Back in 2018, Rutgers athletic department had been operating in the red for multiple years. Their athletic facilities were not up to par as they still used the dastardly bubble, which I actually got to practice in for a major football game back when I was younger. In their first year in the Big Ten, things actually looked like they may go well. After going 6-7 and seven the previous year, they improved to 8-5 and five and went 3-5 and five in Big Ten play. In their first Big Ten home game against Penn State, they had a record-breaking crowd of 53,774 in attendance and beat Michigan on October 4th for their first Big Ten win. They also came back from a 35-10 deficit against Maryland and won 41-38, marking the biggest comeback in school history. Gary Nova, god that is a name I haven't talked about in years, became the all-time touchdown passing leader with 73 in 2014. Rutgers beat North Carolina 40-21 in the Quick Lane Bowl. This was their ninth bowl game in 10 years. It would also be their last until 2021. Things were looking up for Rutgers, but then 2015 happened. 
Under Flood and Ash, there were a lot of off-the-field issues at Rutgers. During the 2015 season, there was alleged misconduct by Kyle Flood. When he thought Flood would resign or be fired before the season opener, and the Rutgers Board of Governors had an emergency meeting. Flood would be suspended for breaking rules when it came to contact between coaches and professors. Flood would be fired along with athletic director Julie Herman, and Rutgers finished with a 4-8 record, and Kyle Flood finished his Rutgers career with a 27-24 record. The coach hired to replace Flood was Ohio State defense coordinator Chris Ash. Ash was born in Iowa and had played defensive back at Drake. He then made stops at Iowa State twice, San Diego State, Wisconsin, and Arkansas, before being hired to coach at Ohio State in 2014. Ash was hired due to his background in winning and his experience in the Big Ten. Chris Ash's first season did not go well as Rutgers went 2-10 and and 0-9 in Big Ten play and was shut out four times. They lost to Michigan State 49-0, Michigan 78-0, Ohio State 58-0, and Penn State 39-0. Rutgers improved to 4-8 in 2017. Rutgers also opened a brand new football practice complex. Rutgers went 1-11 in 2018, and many thought Ash would have been fired after the season. Rutgers had just extended his contract and didn't want to pay the buyout. Off-the-field issues still occurred under Ash. Ash survived the offseason, but after five games in 2019, he was fired. Ash was supposed to bring a winning culture. Instead, he finished his career with an 8-33 record and a 3-27 record in the Big Ten. Ash finished as one of the losingest coaches in Rutgers history. Ash was never able to keep New Jersey players in the state of New Jersey as many of New Jersey's top talent left for the likes of Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, and Wisconsin. It also seemed like coaches who were not from New Jersey or New York are unable to succeed at Rutgers. People from Jersey are different. As a fellow Jersey and myself, if you aren't from this area, it's hard to connect with us. Rutgers losing his full-time coaches were from Iowa and California, respectively. Under Ash, Rutgers' reputation as a relatively decent football program went out the window, and it's why I think they are viewed as such a joke today. Under Ash, Rutgers didn't just lose games. They were embarrassed and has taken a long time to recover from the Ash regime in the public eye. So who is Rutgers going to replace Ash with? After Rutgers fired their head coach, Greg Schiano is rumored to return to Rutgers. Well, in late November, that deal seemed to be dead as Rutgers and Schiano could not get the numbers right. As one article wrote, of course the deal fell through because this is Rutgers. Chiano wanted a realistic chance at winning in Piscataway, and that involved multiple expenditures. Rutgers did not really want to spend the money. The fan base was pissed that Rutgers was about to blow it with Chiano, and the media turned to who else Rutgers could go after. Names that were linked to the Rutgers job included Butch Jones, Joe Moorhead, Jeff Halfley, and others. Well, the deal with Chiano was not as dead as originally thought, and the two were able to agree on a brand new deal. There were actually a lot of rumors that Governor Phil Murphy got a lot of calls, emails, and tweets and got involved with the hiring of Shiano. Shiano signed an eight-year deal where he was making about $4 million per season. Shiano showed he really cared about the Rutgers program during his opening press conference. He is beloved by the Rutgers fan base and he loves the Rutgers fan base. There really was hope back in the Scarlet Knight program. Shiano went right to work helping Rutgers finish with the 61st best recruiting class in the nation for 2020. In 2021, Rutgers signed the 39th best recruiting class, including four four-stars from the state of New Jersey, their first four-star since the 2017 class. In 2022, they signed a top 35 ranked recruiting class, began to keep talent in the state of New Jersey. Going into the 2020 season, everyone looked at Rutgers' opening game against Monmouth. That was until the events of 2020 occurred. After canceling the season, the Big Ten returned with a conference-only schedule. Everyone expected Rutgers to lose every single game, when they opened their season up against Michigan State, they won 38-27, their first conference win since they beat Maryland at home on November 4, 2017, an almost three-year streak. Although they would go on a four-game losing streak, there was a major change in the program because they weren't just losing, they were competing and losing heartbreakers to Illinois and Michigan. They got their first Big Ten road win since October 14, 2017, when they beat Purdue and beat Maryland on the road a few weeks later. They lost a close game to Nebraska to finish the season. They finished with a 3-6 record, and it looked like the future may be bright for the Scarlet Knights. In 2021, Rutgers improved to 5-7 and, and made the Gator Bowl, where they would lose to finish the year 5-8. and eight. But the program seemed to be on the right trajectory. They would go 4-8 in 2022, but rebounded with a 6-6 six six regular season record in 2023, and won the Pinstripe Bowl to finish with a 7-6 record, their first winning record since 2014, their first year as a member of the Big Ten. 
Greg Schiano has rebuilt Rutgers football from the bottom up like he did back in the 2000s, choosing not to take any shortcuts. Schiano focused on building strong relationships with recruits and pushing people to work hard rather than going all in on the transfer portal or trying to give out the most money through NIL. Schiano told the media, it's no secret, we need to be different. We're not going to do it the same way the Blue Bloods do and just do it better than them and go flying by them. We got to be different. We got to do it our way and our way is different. So it's pretty clear like usual players know they want to be a part of it or they know they don't. He focused on creating a strong culture. Florida State transfer Malcolm Ray spoke on transferring to Rutgers saying it was a big risk. So I got to say with Coach Shiano, when we first got on the phone and we were talking like we knew each other from way back when, but it was just like the connection that we had instantly. We clicked so fast it was just like how can I not? A connection with the head coach is like something you want. It was just that it felt right. Shiano focused on developing relationships with New Jersey high school coaches as well, which is really refreshing because as someone who was recruited by Rutgers under Chris Ash and saw how they viewed New Jersey recruits through some teammates, there's a reason Ash failed completely here. Shiano is relentless in coaching and preparing and developing a culture and developing a program and never taking no as an answer. During their successful 2023 season, Shiano said, this is where our expectations of the floor should be. The way I've talked about our team all along is no limits. Most people look at it as, oh, no limits on what you can achieve. He returned after one of the worst stretches in program history. No small accomplishment for a program that was once dinged by the NCAA for rules violations but concluded there was no competitive advantage gained from said violations. And in his first game, a 38-27 win at Michigan State in October of 2020, ended a 21-game conference losing streak. The Scarlet Knights were outscored 355-51 in 9 Big Ten losses the previous season. So why is Rutgers in the playoff conversation if they're just coming off a 7-6 record last year? To many, they may seem like a mediocre team that has sat at the bottom of the Big Ten East for the last decade. While with the Big Ten expanding to 18 teams this year, divisions are now gone and Rutgers may have gotten one of the more favorable schedules in the nation. The Scarlet Knights avoid Ohio State, Oregon, Michigan, Penn State, and Iowa. They travel to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech in a non-conference game. They host Washington and Wisconsin, and their only real challenge on their schedule is a road matchup against USC on six days rest as it's a Friday night game. They have as favorable of a Big Ten Conference schedule as a team can ask. Their offense is looking really strong as they bring in Minnesota transfer Ethan Callum McManus at quarterback and return Kyle Manungai at running back who led the Big Ten in rushing last season with 1,262 yards. On defense, they return 10 starters from a unit that finished top 20 nationally meaning they have the schedule and they have the roster to make some noise this year. ESPN's Kirk Herbstreet spoke on the Big Ten and Rutgers saying, It's weird. You think about the Big Ten. Obviously, what is there now? 18 teams? You go down your list, a lot of it comes down to the schedule. Someone is going to come out of that conference that you really didn't expect. Whether that's an Iowa, whether that's a Rutgers, who knows? Whoever has the most manageable schedule. Rutgers has a schedule that's, by the Big Ten standards, and the Big Ten world that we're in, they can make a little bit of a run. If Rutgers finishes the year 10-2 or 11-1, they could find themselves in the college football playoff conversation. Is it possible? Who knows, as Vegas has them as, as plus 10,000 odds to win the Big Ten title and plus 80,000 odds to win the national championship. We are talking about the playoffs here. Don't be surprised if Greg Schiano and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights shock a lot of people this year. What do you think? Who is your long shot pick to make the college football playoff? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.